Hi all, Teacher Haley here from Study Hat. I just wanted to say thank you for joining my masterclass workshop on the essential mental math strategies. I hope you all found something uh, useful to take away with you and you've got some practice going on to really strengthen your strategies and speed up the process. Now, a question at the end of one of my sessions was can doubling and halving be used with decimals? I didn't model this uh, explicitly to uh, many of you, so I want to take this advantage to do so now. You need to understand the core basics of doubling and halving which essentially for multiplication and division is simply multiplying by two and dividing by two. Okay so depending on the numbers you can combine the strategies slightly differently with partitioning or um, tripling and thirding for example using facts that you derive from those manipulations to answer those calculations easier. In its simplest form then Double in 16 is the same as repeated addition, 16 plus 16, or 16 times 2. Okay, employ whichever mental strategy you need to um, to make it quick. Here would be to partition 16 into two tens and two sixes, giving you two tens and a 12, or you might see it as three tens and a 2. Employ the partitioning and double your 16 to give you 32. In the same way, if you're halving a number, 62 for example, again you can partition it, 60 and 2, half the 60, half the 2, that's 30 and 30, or 1 and 1, you're only needing half of that. So that would be 130 and 11 giving you 31. When you are using this strategy, it's key to remember that you need to decide, is it going to work with the problem that's in front of you. So when you're assessing the question, there are some rules that apply. For example, is the number on the side that you're going to halve an even number? If you're going to halve an even number, great. If you're trying to halve an odd number, yes, it will work, but does it make the calculation easier to understand? Another rule to ask is either number ending in five, because ending in a five and doubling that number would give you a 10, a multiple of 10 to work with, making it much easier to work with. Does one side include a half or a 0.5 or even 0.25 by doubling and doubling? You'll be moving that decimal and making it a whole number and more manageable. Think about these rules when you're trying to decide how and when you should use it. So in its most simplest form, doubling and halving can be seen visually using an array. Here I've four rows of five, um, so that's four rows, five objects in each row. If I half this, if I you know, remove these from here and place them perhaps beside the others, that means I've doubled what I had in my initial row. I'm now left only with two rows of 10 objects, but I halved the initial equation and have doubled key thing to remember is that you haven't added anything, you haven't taken anything away. There are no more numbers or objects there. You've just manipulated the rows and objects in order to play with the numbers and make it easier to work out. Mathematically, it looks like this. 4 halved, which is what this one represents, is 2. 5 doubled is 10, which is what this represents. You had five, now it's 10. Now left with two rows of 10 objects. You can take this one step further and adapt the strategy if you need to and do doubling and halving again. Essentially just halve the row, place it alongside, giving you now one row of 20. Mathematically, that's simply two halved is one, 10 doubled is 20. And now I'm left with an equation that needs to go no further. The answer is 20. 20 objects. There were 20 objects in each of these examples. That's what you need to remember. Nothing has been added. Nothing has been taken away. So to understand that, the, the key knowledge there is that it's a, a proportional adjustment. Nothing has been added. Nothing's been taken away. It's proportional. Everything you have done is to make things easier. You have to recognize the equations as identical. So 36 when doubled becomes 72, meaning 8 becomes halved is 4, these equations are proportionately the same. Okay, They give you the same answer. You haven't added anything or taken anything away. You've just doubled in half, which is why it works. In its most simplest form, perhaps 3 times 16, well, why would you employ it here? Well, I don't know my 12, um, sorry, 16 times tables. So in this example, I could halve 16 to make 8 meaning I would have to double 3 to make 6. Now I know my 6 and my 8 times tables. We practice that in school up to 12 times. It's easier to do. 
I would struggle with my 16. Here's a reason why I have doubled and halved really quickly. Here, 16, unmanageable. I don't know it off by heart. I do know my 8 and my 8. I can half 16. I can double 4, giving me 8 to eight times 8. Here's a way to look at it in a larger number calculation using friendly numbers, for example, to identify why I should double and half here. 25. If I double, it makes 50. I'm working with a multiple ending in zero. Okay, I know that 12 can be halved into 6. So I've doubled one factor, I've halved the other. I can take this again one step further like I did in my earlier array. And 50 doubled is 100, 6 halved is 3. Leaving me with this really easy multiple of, of 10 and seeing my answer very clearly. It will always work. That's what's key to remember. But there are obviously some situations that is better suited to others. Multiples of 5, like I said in the rules before, 10, 25, 50, 100 and so on, are easier to work with than, for example, um, odd numbers. Now just because it's an odd number here doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It does work. 17 divided by 2 is 8.5. 15 times by 2 is 30. I've halved, I've doubled. But this is no easier to work out than 17 times 15. I'm not left with an easier equation. So make sure you choose it for the right reason and that it is an effective strategy. Will it work with decimals? I already answered that question. Yes, it will. But it's the same rule. Some it is more suited to than others. Okay, so let's look at these examples to see when you should be using it or when you would use it. Very easy one, 0 0.5. If you've got 0 0.5 doubling it, it, it cancels it out. It brings it to a whole number. Because you've doubled this factor, you would half this factor. 16 divided by 2 is 8. And there it is, nice and simple. It equals 8. It's an easy, friendly number, a friendly decimal even. How can we adapt this? How can we do um, the strategy to our advantage in other ways? Well, recognising the... Um, 0.25 again, doubling, doubling again, gives me to the 1. 0.25 times 2, 0.5 times 2, I've now got to my whole number. Because I've doubled twice on this factor, I would have to half twice on this factor. 16 divided by 2 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4, I'm left with my answer, super simple. Now I didn't explicitly explain, but this strategy, doubling and halving, can be thought as uh, of as tripling and thirding in some scenarios too when the lend numbers lend themselves to that. Three is obviously an, an odd number so I wouldn't use doubling and halving in this instance but I can see the relationship between three and 2.4 or in my mind I saw three and 24 just removing the decimal knowing that 24 is in the eight times tables three eight times three is 24 recognize that from my derived facts. I'm employing here the doubling and halving strategy but with tripling and thirding. So 3 times 3 is 9, 2.4 divided by 3 is 0.8. Now to do this simply in my head I simply convert this to 24, I removed the decimal, divided it by 3 gave me 8 but remember to place the decimal back in. To make it easier on myself I did 9 times 8 so I knew that was 72 but because I removed it in my head the decimal here I must remember to place it back in the answer. One other way of using it, 0 0.1 for example, using the same strategy, whatever you do to this factor you do the opposite to the other factor, 0 0.1, make it 10 times bigger, gives me to that one, that magic one that I'm looking for, times by 10 here, I divide by 10 over here, 160 divided by 10 is 16, I'm left with my answer super simple, super fast. Um, it's clear to remember that whatever you do to one side or one factor, if you're doubling it or tripling it, etc., you must do the opposite to the other factor. I hope that clarifies the understanding of doubling and halving with decimals and how it can work. Remember to choose friendly numbers. Remember to think of the rules of 0 0.5, 0 0.25. Is it an even number, odd number? That sort of thing to help you decide when to use this strategy. Is it going to help you? I hope to see you in another masterclass soon. And if not, I'll see you in another video.